Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains. That's in Missouri, in the USA. Well, it's time for another Frangy Friday, and we're going to do it a little different. I've got some footage I filmed a while ago over on the retro kitchen table, turn retro computer table. Uh, we'll see it, and then we'll come back here and we'll kind of see the rest of the story, the rest of the parts that go to uh, the main emphasis of this episode. So without further ado, let's get started. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They not only do PCBs and flex PCBs, they also have 3D printing service and injection molding service. They do CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication. They also have a thriving maker community where you can share projects and check out what other people are doing. For your next project, head on over to PCBWay. Well, looky here, a new year and a new box from the Zoom Market. Woohoo! I've been making small purchases for a while and they're holding them for me. And I finally had enough to have them all shipped over. So I'll get these out of this box and we'll have a look at them. Well, here we go. Uh, no huge things this time. Start from the right, I guess. Here we have a Casio 502P. Now this is an older Casio. These are kind of highly sought after now. They usually go for quite a lot of money. Oh, I bet that tapes is going to sound awesome on video. More tape. This one looked to be in very good condition. It wasn't selling for a lot. Now it is a little dirty. There's some scuffs here, but it's not really in. There's a little wear on the paint on these corners. But yeah, I would say this is good. Cleaned up, this will be, you know, good to very good. I can probably polish this out too. And there's some wear along here. And I really wanted one of these because I actually have the matching printer and I have no way to test the printer. Um, this takes two like LR44 batteries. Let me grab some batteries. Okay, I have some batteries. It looks like they just pop in there like so. It's nice it has a separate little battery thing like that. And slide on. Oh my gosh, it even works. That is awesome. There's no contrast dial. It has these interesting ears up here. 55 times 55 equals 3025. It also has an execute button. Okay, it's in run mode, so it's also programmable. Oh yeah, programs, program commands, etc. Interesting, and the printer plugs in here. The printer for these is a really weird technology. And I happened to find one cheap, so I bought it. And this was really cheap compared to what these normally go for, uh, even though it's got some wear on it. So yeah, this is probably, looking at the wear on the back, this is probably a good condition. So very happy with it, especially considering uh, how inexpensive it was. And speaking of inexpensive, I found some inexpensive uh, Japanese advertisements. And I thought this would be just interesting to see what they were advertising as available in Japan at that time. And they had different options a lot of times than were available other places in the world. But 
I do not read Japanese. It's nice they put that little piece of cardboard there with it. And it shows the PV100, the memory card, the book. A couple guys there looking very studious. PV400 with the cassette and printer. The PV700, it's a nice large screen. Originally priced at 34,800 yen. PB700 with the printer and micro cassette dock. That's neat. And it's 4K card and some available books. Oh, this holds out some more. Some more books. These are run-only models. And some games consoles. Huh. Anyhow, I thought that was fun. Um, now, another Casio. 860 PVC. This is another one. These normally go for quite a bit. Um, this one was reasonable. S7, S8, S9. Okay, so put two CR2032s on there and one CR1220 there. That's the memory battery. It looks like this will accept the memory expansion. I don't know if that's the RP33 or the RP8. And, hey, it came on. Excellent. And it's got, looks like it's got some weak contacts there on the LCD. Uh, all the segments are working. It's just rather, rather dim. Not altogether terrible. Well, I guess if you turn the contrast down to where you can't see the background, it's okay. Just not the darkest LCD in the world. TM error. I don't remember what TM means. The mode doesn't seem to change. Okay. It just has the Oh, it does have the master reset there. Then that. Oh, there we go. Okay, we just didn't reset it. So it is, in fact, working. That's excellent. This is another one um, just waiting and picking the right auction and this one was in good shape it's not perfect but it's in really good shape and it wasn't too expensive that way with the slip cover and the whole deal with somebody's notes in it i always like when somebody has notes in there okay what's next okay a sharp this time PCE 500, it's got a little discoloration in the center of the LCD right here, but that's like that um, polarizer separating or aging. Doesn't look to be LCD leakage. There's no memory card with this guy. And this takes four triple A's. Let me go find some of those. I didn't bring any of those over here. Okay, got some caps in it. And it does work. Uh, 
As with a lot of these old large LCDs, the contrast isn't super. It does have the fading and the polarizer. Uh, calculate. I don't know why I always do 55 times 55. It's interesting that it has a little calculate symbol over there. But nice. This one does work. And soft on and off even works nice okay and it came with the slip cover so good combination of screen size machine size and weight and capabilities you can get some rather large ram cards for these guys Okay. Oh, oh it's got to sound great on camera. Now this one is looked to be in a shocking state. It is a 1211 that I bought for parts. And it was really cheap because it was really beat up badly. Or so it looked in the pictures. Here is the back. Lots of scratches there, scratches there. It looks like it was drugged behind a car. But it does have the port cover on it. Interesting. Well, uh, I need the right screwdriver. Might as well take the cover off and have a peek inside. I've got a couple other 1211s that are in need of repair and they need parts. So I bought this unit as a parts donor. Deciding I wouldn't too feel too bad about ruining it by taking vital parts away since it was so beat up anyhow. Okay, there's the cover inside. This looks to be one of the later models. It doesn't have the little bodge board in here see the crust on that battery these button cells can corrode they don't often corrode and they don't corrode that bad but they can and you can see some more corrosion there and with the LCD that beat up we're not going to be able to see it if it works or not that might not be as beat up as I thought a lot of what's on the front here just looks like dirt. Interesting. But I've got one of these that has a bad uh, LCD driver. Um, it worked for quite a while after replacing the LCD and then it, the whole center of the LCD is uh, has stripes through it basically. But that's the data that's coming out of the, the driver. It's not the LCD itself, it's the LCD driver. It's kind of a weird problem. So anyhow, yeah, this one's a piece of junk, but hopefully it's got some good parts that'll go to fixing a couple other units up. Okay, and another Sharp E500. Uh, this has similar looking fading in the middle of the screen. It's also in fairly decent looking shape. Has no batteries in it and 
has no memory card. Pop some batteries in. Oh, I think there's a battery stuck in there because it's only accepting three. Yep. Well, it's not corroded too badly. That was kind of interesting. It's a hitchhiker. Somebody thought they took all the batteries out and there was still one hanging out. Okay. On both of these, the little piece of foam that was right there to press against this battery has left the building. Okay. On, no memory. Oh. So this one may have an issue. It could also be that there's some corrosion on that battery contact. No memory. Huh. Oh. I bet that's saying that it does not have the memory battery installed. Okay. I moved the switch to A. Uh, I think if you switch this to B, it runs the memory off the memory backup battery only or something like that. I don't remember exactly what the English translation of that was. I'm not going to put that all the way on there because it was hard to get back off, but again, flip press, PF1, go into calculate mode. And, you know, about the same contrast as the other. So excellent. Got lucky with both of these that they both work and they're in decent condition. And they were reasonably priced, actually. So I do need to check to see if there's a memory battery in them and take it out if it is. Uh, this one also came with some extras, though. Of course, the case, like the other one did. Uh, and it has the manual, which is in really good shape. And rather dilapidated box but it is the box it doesn't have the packing in the box just the outside of the box but that's something okay we have some more documentation uh, that's just a piece of cardboard they put in there for a stiffener and this is for the 1210 and let me get into this part okay here we go sharp basic the 1210 the 1211 ce 121 the relevant prices and basically the 1210 and 1211 were the same except the 1211 had twice as much ram and during this era, RAM was super duper expensive. Now, this hole punch arrangement is kind of different than what we would see here in the US. There it shows a nice looking 1210. A sharp cassette. Oh, let me back you guys out here. You so a nice looking 1210. They're really touting it has basic. Uh, look how nicely coiled up that cord is. Showing you some about how you can program. Describing the keyboard. And this looks to be a manual and software library and specifications. 
Nice. So I'll scan this eventually and run it through Google Image Translate and we'll see what it says. And with any luck, we'll have that by the time this video is out. Here is one that shows the 1211 with the printer. Some sharp cassettes. Looks like they're using a boombox type of thing for storage. Uh, this is sort of the same on the inside. Not exactly the same, but close. Programs. And the same back. Just a little different. A little different front. Nice. So I'm kind of on the lookout for these types of things now. So now we can see what was available from Sharp and Casio in that time period uh, in Japan. Maybe things not available in the rest of the world. Besides that, they're nice to look at. So now we're back over here at the workbench and here is the Casio FX502P that we just saw. And after I got this, I found the matching uh, Casio FP10 mini electro printer. These are kind of a, an interesting printer. They don't print with ink and they're not thermal. It's like a, an aluminized paper and it uses sparks to burn little marks on the aluminized paper. So these were kind of a thing back out you know, 1980-ish in that time period. They never really did go over really big, but that's kind of interesting. And as I got to playing with this, uh, the only two English uh, user guides available online were terrible quality, almost unusable. And I got to looking around. I really haven't been buying a lot of stuff recently, but I got to looking around and I found something I couldn't resist on eBay. Isn't that usually the case? Here we go. So. Here we have the Casio FA1 speaker system for music or cassette interface. Pretty cool. So the calculator slots right in like that. And then, I'm a little scared here. It kind of looks like maybe everything didn't get included or else it's just wrapped up really nice. We'll see. Okay. We have this nifty wallet with another 502P. Now this one's not in bad shape, but it's not as in good a shape as the other one. It does work. Um, but it comes with not only the wallet, but the operator guide, the keyboard overlays, a little card like this, And a couple other little pieces of paper. So these are things that are not available online as far as I could find. And this is not quite as good as the manual, but it is new information, uh, especially the overlays. These are pristine shape. I don't think they've ever been used. So I will get all these things scanned. Uh, look in the description down below. And... Uh, I'll get that updated uh, with the scans, uh, that sort of information. See so if we can get the calculator out of here. Maybe we go like, oh, that's in there pretty good. Uh, there we go. Yeah, I think this will clean up pretty well. So that was kind of nice. Uh, coming with the overlays and everything and the wallet so come up with one really nice looking set and uh, we'll have an episode in the future where we'll try out all these accessories 
with this early Casio programmable calculator. Well, how about that? Uh, wound up with almost the full set of the Casio FX502P stuff. Would have been nice to have gotten the, the larger actual user manual with this, but these are things that aren't already available. So we'll make do with what we have. I'll get this stuff scanned, put it online so everybody has access to it. Uh, any questions or comments, just leave them down there in the comment section. Love to hear from you. Thanks to everyone who supports the Hate Bird channel. I really appreciate it. And until next time, bye.